Learned it in school, maybe, but I didn't apply it to my personal life until later. Wasted a lot of time. It has to do with perception. Everybody has different perceptions of reality. All of you might be having different perceptions of me right now. If we, okay, so you have how you view now, your view of now, and your view of the past, what happened a year ago, maybe. And that's normal. Different perceptions. When I see a couple and they talk about their relationship, they may have very different perceptions of their relationship and each other. Sometimes I wonder if they live together. <laughs> if you, you know, teenagers have different perception of reality than I might. That's normal. Where the problem is, you know, is what we do with those differences? What would we like to do with the difference? Because to see it, usually it's the debate, the validity of it. It's usually about right and wrong. That's not true. I don't do that. <laughs> yes, you do. When? Last week. I didn't do it. Yes, you did. Now, tell the truth. <laughs> it's like a debate about whether it's true or not. How many times you tell somebody, that's not true, I didn't do that, that's not what happened, that's not how I see it, and where does that go? Where does that lead? Leads into an argument that no one wins. It leads into two polarized camps. Not going to be close. How many times do parents negate their kids' perceptions and tell them it's not true? And what happens is that the kids don't talk to their parents. They talk to their friends, because they don't do that. So when you invalidate someone's perception, it breaks down communication. I'm not saying you have to agree with it. I'm just saying you don't tell them they're wrong. So, because that wa that's a waste of time. I don't let couples do that. A lot of therapists do. I, to me, you do that in your living room. You don't need to see me to debate reality. I'm not going to be a judge and make a ruling. You're right, you're wrong, next case. You know? <laughs> and they want to do that because they bring in the evidence, they'll bring in emails, they'll do all kinds of things to substantiate their position, just like a lawyer would in court. But uh, you're both right. Now what? Now it can't be both right. He's wrong. <laughs> no, it's true for him. So here's the attitude I like. My wife is always right. That's the attitude I put in my brain. <laughs> she is always right. I don't always agree with her, though. I'm not saying I agree with her, but I don't tell her she's wrong anymore. That's what I used to do. What a waste of time. <laughs> you know who else I used to do that with? My mother. I'd always tell her she's wrong. And then she'd, we'd just spend time on the phone going around in circles. Like, you never come to see me, Dan. Really? I was just there last weekend. How the hell can you say that? Well, you didn't. You spend more time with your mother-in-law because you like your mother-in-law more than you like me. Oh, no. Come on. How many times I told you that's not true? <laughs> it didn't go anywhere. You think she ever goes, okay, you're right, I'm wrong. No. So my wife thinks that I don't help out enough around the house today. It's true. I don't agree. But I'm not going to say, oh, that's ridiculous. I don't help out. Look, at, I do this, I do this, I do this. I give a whole list. She go, oh, okay, now that you said that, I think I'm wrong. Let's have dinner. <laughs> no, it's like, you're full of shit. You don't do all those things. You think you do, but you don't really do it. So I get out of all that. I say, all right, you think I don't help out today. What can I do to change your perception? Well, if you made the bed when you got out of it, it wouldn't feel like a maid around here. Hey, no problem. I don't think I already do, but I'll, I'll make the bed then. Good, let's have dinner. Totally different evening. You don't appreciate me. You take me for granted. Oh, yeah, how can that be? Okay, I'm not going there. <laughs> how could I show you that I appreciate you more or, and I'm not taking it? See, I put it back for some kind of remedy. Very different. Find out what works. Oh, a classic one, is, <laughs> and that, this is a kid one. My daughter goes to the University of Colorado instead of Santa Barbara, which would have been cheaper. She goes to the University of Colorado, and I get on, she gets on the phone, and she goes, you know, Dad, all the, all the boys at the University of 
Colorado are asshole idiots. Really, Michelle? Yeah, they're all idiots. And I want to say, and you've interviewed everyone? How do you know that? You know, I didn't do that. I could have said, well, you could have gone to Santa Barbara. You hadn't have to, you know, I didn't say it. I said, I said well, I guess it'll be a lonely semester then if they're all idiots. Yeah, I don't know why I came here. It's really depressing. And she goes, well, all right, well, good talking to you. Maybe tomorrow you feel differently. Next day, Dad, there was this really cute guy in my math class. Really? What was his name? See, but I didn't go back to yesterday because at that point in time, that's how it seemed to her. It was a distortion, of course. But to her, it was reality. <coughs> and she was reacting emotionally to that reality. Don't negate someone's perceptions. It's just like negating emotion. If you want to communicate with them. If you want to fight and argue, that's a whole other story. So I put the emphasis on not right or wrong, but difference, resolve the difference of perception. And I don't care if it's an hallucination. The thing is all over me. Can't you see them? All over me. I don't see any ants. What are you talking about? See, someone is hallucinating. That's true. I used to communicate with schizophrenics. They hallucinate all the time. <laughs> and if you tell them that they're, what they're seeing is not true, they, you like are not in their world. I had a kid at Napa that used to hallucinate that his father was always coming after him when I needed to get him from the sleeping area to the eating area. Come on, Harold, gotta go now. <laughs> no, my dad's out there. He's gonna kill me. And I was a little green. I said, Harold, your dad's not out there. He's in New York. He's not here. So we can go eat now because I gotta get you to eat. That was my job. <laughs> and he was like talking to a wall. It's like he wasn't. Uh, finally, I got wise. I said, okay, you think your dad's out there, Harold? You think he's gonna kill you? Yeah, Dan, what should I do? I don't know, but what can I do? Well, if you hold my hand, I'll be okay. No problem. Here, let's go. Mm -hmm. I just want to get your ass over here. <laughs> but f for the first time, I gave validity to his perception. Said to him, no, it's not happening. Now, that's bizarre, but that happens between couples all the time and parents. All right, hopefully you get that one. Now, people who are insecure don't like this. They always need to convert everybody to their view of the world. The right view, there can't be two views. If you're confident, you don't need to do that. It's like cultism. You know, everybody's got to see the world the same way. And they kind of make it so everybody does. That's scary. But if you're confident, you can have a whole lot of views on reality. It's a lot of gods. <laughs> Different. Bottom line is, when you debate perception, it creates distance. If you want distance, go for it. Doesn't create intimacy.